Meta's new Llama 3.1 model is here. It's big, fast, and it's open sourced. And it smokes the competition like fine meats. Smoking these meats here. Smoking meat. Smoking these meats. Why do I suddenly feel like wakeboarding? Plus, OpenAI and UBI, Adobe upgrades its AI, XAI makes Elon say, oh my my. This is not a normal show. Because I'm here and it's AI for humans. <laughs> You're not gonna like this episode. The big release today is Llama 3.1, and we're releasing three models. Um, the first time we're releasing a 405 billion parameter model, um, so it's by far the most sophisticated open source model that, that I think anyone has, has put out. And it really is competitive with some of the leading closed models and in some areas is even ahead. Why so is this a parameter measuring contest? <laughs> what is happening? Okay, so we have to, let's step back here and say, Meta released a new large language model, Llama 3.1, the 450 billion parameter model, meaning that it is the biggest 405 model. 405 billion. <laughs> 405 yeah, billion. yeah, this is the problem. <laughs> right. This Four, is the problem with this entire billion. scene. 405 billion. Parameters are like neurons in the brain. They are what manage connections. I am distilling this so poorly that someone is going to leap down my throat on YouTube, but that's a lot of parameters. That's, okay, so that is a lot. That's a lot of parameters, but let's talk about what it means. First of all, the benchmarks have come out and they're pretty good. Like compared to some of the other stuff, the benchmarks are looking like the yeah. new Llama model is really one of the best models, if not the best. Now it's not the best in every benchmark and the benchmarks are a very fine group of things that they put these AI models through to try to see how good they are at certain elements. Reasoning. There's math, yes. reasoning, yes. communications, probably a wizard role play. Yeah. There's a bunch of different benchmarks out there, but by and large, this thing outperforms GPT-40, the best model by OpenAI. What? No, it's okay. It. Keep going. Just keep going. Say it. I don't. What wizard role play are you thinking about playing? What should we play? We're in person. We uh, might as well play some wizard role play. What's your name of your wizard? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Is that a real thing you play? That's the first thing that popped in. You said. Yeah, it's role play. <laughs> Let's keep moving. Okay. The other big thing, Kevin is that it is being fully released open source, which a lot of people weren't sure was gonna happen with this model because it is essentially Meta's biggest model and most cutting edge. They are going to release it open source and let developers fine tune it and see everything, see the guts of it, understand how it works. Yeah. And this is very different than both Claude and OpenAI. This is Mark Zuckerberg's hill to die on. He believes very strongly in open source AI. And we believe in it as well. The very exciting thing about all of these Llama releases historically is that they come out, they wow you with benchmarks, but you just gotta wait. Yeah, let it simmer for like a week or two and then a community will go and make it uncensored, add in a bunch of capabilities, fine tune it for math or coding. In three weeks time, OpenAI's gotta release something. Yes, yes. Well, this is the answer. So this is the other thing to think about with this is before we get into all the stuff Zuckerberg has said about it, OpenAI has been sitting on something, right? They've been sitting on something they've been working on for a while. We know they've been sitting on the GPT-40 voice model, but I think they're sitting on something else. I think we're gonna see something by November or December of this year. You have said post-election, which I think, post -election, I think makes yeah. sense. I think that's a really smart thing. But we might see a GPT 4.5 or something. Sure. But yeah. what this means for all of you is that a free large language yeah. model that competes with the best in-class paid model Zuckerberg just mic dropped it on the community and this will over time make its way to all of the meta apps. So this is what you'll have when you go to meta. Over AI. time, it's there. Well, it's already there in, yeah. in WhatsApp. Yeah. They're rolling it out to Instagram I use it in and Instagram. to Facebook. Oh, they Booyah. said- Booyah! <laughs> did you really? I did, I did. I used Are you sure you used that it one? It says 3.1. Wow, because they said now, that it, it may was not coming be the, later. It may not be the 3.1- 405, 405 billion, billion and that's yes. the thing. So yeah. it's sometimes a little difficult to key into exactly which model you have, but this thing will be in all of these apps, but not just the official meta apps, Gavin. Yep. These will be in every AI app that wants to build for something that's free and open source. And that's what Mark Zuckerberg talked about is the idea he's gonna put it on Azure, he's gonna put it on Amazon, all these places that's gonna allow developers who are the people that are gonna make the apps that will build with this are gonna have access to it. We built it for ourselves. And before Llama 3.1, you know, we, we kind of had this instinct that if we made it open source, there would be a community that would grow around it. 
And that would actually extend the capabilities and make it more valuable for everyone, including us. This is a real shot across the bow to the companies like Claude, mm -hmm. to the companies like OpenAI. Before we get into all the stuff, if you're watching this video right now, subscribe to this channel. We are so excited to have you like the video. And anything else we should tell them to do while we have them here? Go to our Patreon. Is that what you're setting That's up? That's what I'm going to okay. set up. That's okay. right. Good. You know, I'm just glad you caught that. got a pitch going, and I didn't yep. know if you're going to bring out the Cutco knives. I didn't want to step don't, on it. Just don't mention your wizard again. Keep your wizard to yourself. I, I didn't want watch you to... Lord of the Rings. Is it Gandalf? It is Gandalf. So <laughs> makes sense. Uh, <laughs> yes, it makes sense in all the absolute wrong ways. It's a role. You said wizard role play. What else are you doing as a wizard? You're not casting the word spells. Gate. You're having. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. Go to our Patreon. Please like, subscribe. It all sincerely helps us grow. And if you're watching this on YouTube and you're like, oh, I want more of these two chuckleheads. What a good time. There's a much longer podcast. Yes. If you go listen to the audio version, we dive deep into a bunch of stuff. But we used Meta today and you were surprised at how capable it was. So the one really interesting implementation that's out right now that you can go play with is on Grok. Not G-R-O-K, not Elon's Grok, but G-R-O-Q which we've talked about in the show before, is an AI hardware company that's doing some really interesting ways to process AI on their own proprietary hardware. And it's always been known for being very fast. But I actually used Grok to, to rank sausages. Of course you did. I asked it to rank sausages and it gave me a really good ranking. We'll put up the video here. Hey Grok, tell me about the best sausages in the world. Okay, now tell me, uh, make a list of the ingredients in these sausages. And then I actually well, you wanted it as a table. So it formatted yes. that data as yes. a table. And by the yeah. way, it is taking pages of output and nearly instantly yeah. because of the Grok custom silicon handling these requests in a way that made me go, Ooh, oh, that's interesting. We've seen the speed many times with yeah. Grok, but the capability yes. matched with the speed was magical. You know what made me think of when I did that? Because what I was doing was, you, you just saw it here in the video, I was doing audio call-ins and it was giving me text back. But it did make me think about GPT-40 voice mode because I bet that in some way is what they're doing, right? They're like processing it so fast that it can feel like a real-time conversation. That's right. So you asked for sausages. Yes. You had it grid those sausages. You had it rank them by, I think, deliciousness. Yes. And by usability <laughs> As a weapon. Yes, which is, I, you know, sausage fight. You never know what's going to happen there. I, we don't want to do that. Let's do you, not do that. Let's do you know which wizard you want to call no, if you have a sausage fight? I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Okay. I did then. I even asked it goofily what sausage would be best to use as a weapon yeah. if you were in a fight. And we're, we're, like, we're going to do a deeper dive. This just came out yes, the day yes. of our recording, and we've only had minutes to play with it. But we even reused some older character prompts yeah. that we had written and it was, with it. So much better. So much better. Yeah. So capable. Yeah. It was. It made him laugh yeah. when writing a mini comedy script for something that we're going to have coming out pretty soon. So again, the takeaway for all of you is that this thing is out. Yes. This thing is going to be free and everywhere. Yes. This thing is good. Yes. Okay. So the other thing that happened is that Mark Zuckerberg wrote a very long letter titled Open Source is the Path Forward for AI. And I just want to say he also did a... 35 minute interview with Rowan Chung. So shout out to Rowan Chung, mm -hmm. the AA Rundown, uh, great newsletter. He really thinks that open source development, and just so everybody in the audience is familiar, I know we have a lot of tech experts in our audience, but a lot of people that aren't. Open source development means basically everybody is allowed to take software, work on it. They might put it back into the open or they might make their own versions of this right. that they become closed, but it allows for a community of people to work on a piece of software. And Zuckerberg has really been championing this for AI because he believes it is safer than closed development in his mind. One of the biggest issues with AI becomes unintentional harm. And the idea behind unintentional harm means that the AI goes rogue on you, right? Mm -hmm. So the famous paperclip problem where it's like you tell an AI to make paperclips and then that's all it wants to do and it ends up killing people because it has to make more paperclips. With open source AI, what Zuckerberg is saying in this letter is that you don't run into that problem because people will see that before it comes. Now, there is the other side, which is intentional harm, where people have the ability to do bad things. And a lot of the bigger companies are using that reason mm -hmm. for not releasing their models. That creates an environment where there's the, clearly the haves and the have nots, yes, right? Yes. I have my model, it's closed down, it is all seeing, all powerful. Sorry, everybody else in the world, where that is the open source community's rallying cry. Yes. Our software needs to get as capable as the big leagues that are closed. And usually there is a significant lag time between the best models yep. and the open source models. and Meta is closing the gap. Do you ever wonder with Meta, like when Mark does one of these things, do you like, like, do you think he like just gets the group together and he's like, 
Let's go, boys. It's time. You know, it's like, it's like, because, you know, that's a big launch. Yeah. Like, they're launching across every single platform. And the other thing we skipped, which we should talk briefly about. Oh, you can is, talk about the Avatar yes, stuff? Yes, well, yes. that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Is that's what he's doing with his bros. Yes, yes. Get together. We're going to smoke some meats and we're going to see me as a gladiator. How do I look, boys? <laughs> so basically, Mark Zuckerberg teased, which I tried to do and I couldn't access. I don't know if you tried this, but. I don't want to scan my face for meta. I, I, I've scanned so many things, I don't care anymore. <laughs> Stop. Stop, stop right now. We're talking about this thing. So it, what Mark Zuckerberg teases, we'll show the video in the YouTube. You basically go into the app and he does it within Instagram and you scan your face very quickly and you say, imagine me as this. And he says, imagine me as a gladiator, imagine mm -hmm. me as a streetwear guy or something. <laughs> That's right, yeah. I'm pretty excited about this latest update to Meta AI. It basically lets you generate images of yourself in any style and doing anything that you want. Let's check this out because I need a new profile pic. All right, so you take a few photos of yourself, then you wait for it to upload, and then you can enter whatever prompt you want. Imagine me as a gladiator. <laughs> All right, boy band. <laughs> and it's whatever, stuff yeah. we've seen yeah. in Stable Diffusion. We've seen in all sorts of different things. But it is one tap yes. easy. It's, it's within Instagram, Instagram yeah. which is billions of users. Yeah. And it's in people's hands faster than Apple yes. intelligence yes. got that feature into people's hands. Which so. is, again, the big thing, I think. Even in his letter, he goes off on Apple. I think Mark is trying to push past Apple. I think that's the goal he wants is like Apple's in his sights, not really OpenAI, mm -hmm. not really any of these other AI companies because they're kind of small compared to what Facebook is. He wants Apple. All right, so there are a bunch more big AI stories. GPT-40 Mini just launched. Here's the really exciting thing. If you're building in the AI space, if you just assume that the frontier, the foundational models are going to get cheaper and get better, you're gonna win, and that's what's happening now. This was massive for OpenAI. They cut costs by 60%. Yeah. So on OpenAI's end, they passed a lot of those savings onto the end user, and suddenly, if you had a project that was getting thousands of users and costing tens of thousands of dollars a month, it just got cut by 60%. Yeah, so suddenly your margins go way up. You yes. have a much better chance. Sam Allman said specifically, he tweeted this. He said, way back in 2022, the best model in the world was text-davinci- oh, oh, remember this one? Da oh, model, we used yeah. it. We used it a while. It was much, much worse than this new model. It cost 100x more. That is two years ago. Yeah. Two years ago, there was a model that was way worse and it cost 100 times more. So what you see is a curve of exponential capability and you see a drop in price. Yes. And going back to my Grok experience, when you have always on super smart AI that is very fast, the world changes. Okay. Really quickly, we have to talk about UBI. So there was a really interesting study that Sam Altman partly funded about UBI, universal basic income. And the idea with UBI has always been if you give people money to live, a monthly welfare, stipend, a monthly stipend, thousand bucks a person, yes, that it might make their lives better in some way. And that also, the reason it connects to AI is because with AI, there's a lot of people worried that it's going to put people out of work and that UBI is the only way that that people will actually be able to live in the future. One thing was it got a lot of negative press early on because it actually people worked a little bit less. You're yeah. right, that was the headline. People wanted yeah. to say, oh, clearly UBI doesn't work. This was a longer term study than most. And they basically found that people worked, it was like 1.6 or 1.8 hours less per week. Yep. It basically totaled over the course of the year, you got six or eight vacation days. Yes. Which yes. I know is reason to take to the streets. Yes, but but I will say the interesting thing was two, two things they figured out. One is they spent more time with friends and family, which that's amazing. Secondly, these are all people who are not making a lot of money and it allowed them conceivably to go do other stuff and yes. to build wealth. In fact, when they came back and looked at their savings after year three, this was a long-term study, the people who got the UBI actually had significantly more savings than the people who didn't. Now, all of this is early stages, but I do think this is something we're gonna have to seriously look at as a human race yes. going forward. But many of the other studies show that it is incredibly effective. They are smaller studies. I think this ultimately ultimately shows that. I know people wanted to cherry pick yes. certain facts and shift the study in one way, but even Sam Altman himself was really excited by these findings. And also levels of altruism went up. People use their extra money 
to help friends yes. and family, yes. to buy goods and services for them. I think it's just a net positive. The UBI of $1,000 is not that much when you think about it, but of course, for people who don't have homes or people who need help in a lot of ways, it's a big deal. But imagine a UBI of like $50,000 a year, right? There's a lot of people who may be out of work that could pursue all sorts of interesting things. Now, all of this is kind of a pipe dream right now because nobody knows their only tests and I still doubt that I can see it working in America per se, but we'll see. I will say, if you're worried about job displacement with AI, you should probably get into something hyper-specific like being a vector artist, because <laughs> we see a lot of AI tools. If you don't know what vector art is, it's... What, I'm sorry. Kevin, I hate to tell you something. Adobe just introduced some new AI tools, Adobe. and one of them is you creating vector art in Adobe Illustrator. Adobe replacing artists, Adobe. So Adobe just rolled out a bunch of new Firefly AI tools in its things, and one of them is a very cool way that you can create art within Illustrator. And Illustrator is their professional art program. So they rolled this out. It allows you basically to generate a shape and then it you can fill it in, generative fill, like what they would normally do. But vector art, so yes. it's unlimited resolution. Yes. You can go to any scale with it and it's like very fine detail vector art. It looks really good. And you can see all the little vector points. And it's layers, that. right? Oh, it yeah. creates layers. Yeah. So the layers is a big thing. If you're an artist or an illustrator, you understand AI art never really creates layers, but this creates layers for you. So it's a very, very big update. Yeah. But if you're going to have really incredible tools like vector art bird generators or super fast chat bots, I guess you need like a super villain sized layer with a super cluster of compute. Kevin, could this be in Texas? Could I put the super villain layer in Texas? <laughs> Gavin's dear friend and spiritual guide That's, in this world, Elon do Musk, that. has do just that. announced that he has the world's biggest supercomputer for a Grok 3. And some people are saying he's lying, that it's actually not fully online right now, like yeah. not even close to it. So to say you've got the most superpower thing is a little bit of a stretch. Elon has been known in the past to yeah. stretch the truth yep. a little bit, but let's hear him talk about his new XAI supercomputer in Memphis, Tennessee. XAI is a fairly new company. It's just a little over a year old. Um, so we, we really need, we have a lot of catching up to do to companies, relative to companies that have been around for five or 10 or 20 years. Um, we're catching up fast. I think with the, the velocity of improvement of XAI is faster than uh, any other company out there. Um, we just completed the um, we, just, we, we were just able to install and bring online um, a, a massive new training center that we, like, as I mentioned, we're building in, in Memphis. Um, and it's uh, from getting hardware installation to it beginning training was only 19 days. And that's the fastest by far that anyone's uh, been able to do that. Pretty impressive. He's pretty good at getting engineers to do seemingly impossible feats. Yes. But he's going to use this to train Grok 3, yeah. which is the AI assistant on X. Grok with a K, not yeah, with a Q. Grok with yes. a K. Yes. And that should be out, he's saying, sometime in December. December. So which, we'll see how capable it is. Honestly, again, I think the end of this year is going to be bonkers. You're going to see OpenAI's new thing. You're going to see Claude's going to have a new thing. Llama will be fine-tuned by a bunch of people by that point, and then you'll have Grok. I don't know, maybe we're going to get an, an Apple intelligence. Maybe we'll have some stuff leaked out by then, although they say later on. Either way, it feels like a pretty big rest of the year. It feels like things are certainly not slowing down, which yeah. everybody said, and it feels like there's still plenty of performance to eke out of all of these things.